Tom, first tell me about your organization. Well, it's, um, the name is Trust and Consulting. Um, it's kind of a, it's a for-profit company that does non-profit work, I guess the best way to explain it. The reason that we do that is so we can go out and do projects to make money to help fund the non-profit work that we do. Our, our whole main goal is, um, it was kind of a, a dream of myself and my friend Dave Phillips that um, in retirement that we would be able to travel the country and help families out for drowning victims that are in potentially deep water um, where the local agencies may not have the technology to go after them. Um, so I retired a year and a half ago and started gathering um, the side scan sonar and the ROV and the, the boat to do that. Dave's still working full time and then takes vacation time to, to come and help. Um, so that's kind of what we do. Um, we've done a few things with shipwreck and stuff as well, but primarily drowning victim recovery is what we're all about. And tell me what you're out doing today and how you got involved. Uh, I was contacted actually through a friend of mine, Keith Ralston, who had been contacted by the family, um, the, uh, Keith's family, um, to search for, for these three folks that um, had gone missing September 17th. And after talking with them, it, um, it was reasonable that um, uh, there was more searching to be done uh, in a real big area. So um, we collected as much information as we could, and then um, we had target dates, which were kind of built around the weather pattern. Um, this, this week looked like it was going to be fairly good weather, so we thought we'd come out and, and try to do some searching this week. And you started yesterday? We did, yes. Explain to me what yesterday was like and what you're doing today. Um, well, what we did is um, Bruce's legacy went out and covered um, some of the deeper water areas, the uh, you know 350 to 400 foot range water area, and we were doing things a little bit closer to shore, um, in in the any anywhere from 30 feet to 110 feet of water is what we um, had searched yesterday. Um, just thinking that maybe they had, they had made it closer to shore than the cell phone ping information that we have. Uh, and we know that cell ping information, um, that had been searched pretty heavily by the Michigan State Police and other agencies. So um, we just want to kind of double check that and then work um, closer, kind of on a straight line into uh, the river, the opening where they would have docked. And is this the big reef area you were in? Um, they were, yep, but... Um, Keith, the Bruce Legacy, was uh, on just out near the reef area, correct. And um, how deep can your submersible go, and what kind is it? Explain to me about it. Well, we have side scan sonar. I'm using a marine sonic side scan sonar. And we also have a video ray um, remotely operated vehicle. So we find targets with the marine sonic side scan sonar. And once we find targets that we think um, look like essentially could either be a drowning victim or a boat, we would then send the ROV down to get um, video footage of um, what's down there. And that has sonar and video on that as well. But that's more intended for a detailed um, close-up search where um, the side scan sonar is intended to do wide area searching. Where we're covering right now in one boat pass 500 feet of uh, in one swath, so 250 feet on either side of the tow fish. And there's uh, and several boats out there with you today? There's two boats, yep. There's uh, the boat that I own and the boat that um, Keith owns from Bruce's Legacy. And has you gotten any, have you gotten any targets on the bottom that even don't look like a boat necessarily? I mean, how... Well, there's, there's how, things that, uh, of course, are unique, uh, but nothing that is, is saying, geez, let's, let's put the ROV down and look at this. Uh, and when that happens, obviously we will we'll stop what we're doing and put the ROV down to, to, to put eyeballs on it. Is an intact 14-foot boat big enough to be an anomaly looking on your screen? Absolutely, yep. Um, a drowning victim is big enough to be an anomaly for us to, to look at. What is your thought about, I know you don't know what happened, but this whole thing about not finding any evidence after that massive search, what does that say to you? Anything? Well, um, it, 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 what I believe is, my, my, my opinion is that whatever happened, happened very fast. 
and that they there was um, no distress. So maybe a large wave um, came over the, the stern of the boat and took it out uh, very fast, so, so they didn't have a chance to call for help, didn't have a chance to put on life jackets. Um, and chances are life jackets probably tucked away under seats. Um, that's why you didn't find those floating. And as we understand it now, um, the cooler that we thought existed does not exist at that day it was found at his home. So it's not really all that unusual to not find much of a debris field. Um, you know, normally you'll find a, a cushion or something, but um, if there isn't anything like that to be found, then you're not going to find it. And how long can you uh, work on this as far as weather and wave conditions uh, without uh, having to stop? Um, the waves, the, uh, the wind and waves are absolutely the biggest um, issue that we have because it needs to be fairly flat for us to be able to use the side scan sonar and get good images. So one to two foot seas is reasonable. Anything beyond that, and then we would probably pull the boats in. And what has the latest weather uh, been uh, telling you it's going to be like over the weekend? You know, right now we're we're in like uh, one and a half foot seas, so we're approaching where it's, I am. Mean, you know, we're starting to see it in our images, but it's not so bad that we we can't continue. And the rest of the week is looking, or through the weekend is looking good. So if that continues, we'll, Dave and I are prepared to stay through Sunday for sure. And then Sunday afternoon we're going to reassess the family and think and just discuss what if we think that it's worthwhile to continue or if maybe we should call it and yeah. again it'll, it'll all depend on how much search area we've covered because this I mean literally this could be uh, uh, it's a huge area um, so it might be such a thing that we we call it for now and, and, and do something in the spring when the weather patterns are a bit better um, with flatter weather, you can spend more time on it. And again, that'd be a discussion we would have with the family and, and discuss with them what how they want to proceed. I know there's a lot of questions I could ask you, but but is there anything I should have asked you that you'd like to mention that you want people to know at this point? Um, not really. Just that um, you know, it's 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 a huge area with very little information, so it makes it really really difficult.